recently I was asked to write some short devotions for Tides, uh, a series issued on email by the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. And at that time, the theme for that particular month was learning God's ways, unpacking a variety of ways in which we might look for where God as a work during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and all the restrictions on church life which go with it. The particular week that I was asked to write for focused on slow, touching on themes and passages of scripture that seek to draw our attention to some ways in which God often works slowly. It was an encouragement to me to do it, and I hope it will be for you as well, uh, as we continue to find ourselves uh, experiencing an extended time of waiting, albeit with a little bit of hope that things are going to be relaxed. I already used one of the devotions called Slow Timing at one of our online prayer gatherings, but I have another four. And so the themes we will be looking at over four short devotions are slow response, slow to show, slow but sure, and slow growth. These will be short, uh, but I hope will encourage you to respond in different ways to God. So as we look at the idea of slow response, let me read Psalm 13, a short psalm. This is the word of God. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Amen. How long until we get there? How long until my online order arrives? How long to download this game? How long until I can get a vaccine? How long do I have to wait to talk to customer services? How long until we can go on holiday again? We live in a time and a culture when we want everything now. Maybe a few years ago, we would have used examples like instant coffee or a pot noodle or microwave dinners as to how we like things quickly. And while those things still remain, I think some people are back to appreciating taking time and waiting for their handcrafted coffee or taking the time to prepare and cook fresh food. I think we have more of an issue with technology now Technology that we that we usually have in our hands, we can instantly get access to news, to entertainment, we can shop, we can book a holiday, we can look up what a word means. And because we are used to getting everything instantly, we can struggle when things slow down. When we have to queue physically or on the phone, and when we have to wait to be allowed to travel further afield. And often we ask, how long? As we read Psalm 13, we come across how long four times. And we should feel the intensity of David's suffering. At the core of what he feels, David is suffering because he feels abandoned by God. David feels isolated. He feels lonely, he feels alienated, he feels forgotten by God. In his suffering, he questions God. The Psalm opens up, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? 
How long will you hide your face from me? Is that your experience now? Has that been your experience ever? Maybe over the, these last 12 months? And maybe like David, because of thinking like that, you started to focus on yourself. In verse two, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? There is a real loneliness in David's suffering. And he can't think his way out of it. Or maybe like David, you think about others and you say, how long will my enemies triumph over, over me? And verse four, he says, and my enemies will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. David has a real fear that his enemy and his foes will have the last laugh. Has any of this been your experience? Is it your experience now? What should we do if it is? Well, we pray. Verse three, David says, look on me and answer, Lord my God. And in his prayer, he trusts. With the word, but in verse five, David moves from fear to faith. His circumstances will not have changed, but in faith, he trusts in God's covenant love, God's unfailing love. And he rejoices in his salvation. And he sings. Many have experienced isolation and loneliness in the past 12 months. Maybe it has felt like God has abandoned you. Maybe you have cried out, how long? And maybe you would really like God to explain why, why all of this has happened. But he is not a God of explanations. He is a God of promises, covenant promises. And because of his covenant love for us, we can trust him. King David points us to King Jesus, who also knew what it was like to feel separated from God, his father, who knew the loneliness of a troubled soul. And he knew what it was like to come up against an enemy. As believers, we can at the same time experience a sorrowful heart when it seems like God is distant and slow to respond and yet know the experience of a joyful, trusting heart. The last two verses, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. How are you going to respond now? Are you going to pray? Are you going to sing? When I wrote my devotional for PCI, I suggested people listen to the song, The Lord is My Salvation. You can get that on YouTube. Search for The Lord is My Salvation by Shane and Shane, perhaps. And why not just sit there sing along.